Let's take a closer look at a semi-additive PCB process flow. So as I mentioned earlier, semi-additive PCB process starts with a bare substrate. So the very first step that we're going to need to do is to take our copper clad laminate and etch away all of the copper from that base dielectric. In some of these process snippets, you'll see that we've left a small strip of copper on the strip that we're demonstrating with just to be able to show a before and after of the process that you're seeing. But in practice, fabricators are going to strip away all of the copper from that production panel. Now that we have the bare substrate, the next step is to apply the liquid metal ink or the LMI coating. This liquid metal ink is a palladium-based catalyst to be used for the electroless copper plating. So what's unique about it is that it is ultra thin, it's only a few nanometers thick, it's ultra dense, it's forming a fully packed atomic film, and it conforms to any 3D surface at a nanometer scale. So once the LMI has been coated and cured, the next step in the process flow will be to apply electroless copper. Now this is going to be the same electroless copper that your PCB fabricators are using today in the traditional processes. So as you can see, the liquid metal ink allows the electroless to be coated in a thin, uniform, and dense deposition. You can see from the SEM photograph just how thin that copper is and how it conforms to all the surfaces of the dielectric. You can also see a graphical representation here of your base substrate, which would be in blue, the palladium seed layer, or the LMI that we had talked about the plating, and then the electroless copper. So the LMI is going to be just a few nanometers thick, and the electroless itself is going to be 0.2 to 0.3 microns thick, or thin, <laughs> as the case would be. Um, so much thinner than traditional electroless copper plating. Following the electroless copper plating step, we follow the very standard photoresist processes. So we're going to apply the photoresist, expose, and develop. From there, we're going to go into electroplating. And again, this is the same electrolytic copper chemistry that your PCB fabricators are using today. And this will form the circuit traces. Once those traces are formed, we're going to strip away the remaining photoresist, and it will leave a circuit pattern that looks something like this. You can see your circuit traces with the nice vertical sidewalls, and you can see that very thin layer of electroless copper still on the surface. The next step here would be to flash etch that remaining electroless copper from the panel. So once the flash etch has been completed, your circuit pattern will look something like this. You're going to have nice straight sidewalls. This process eliminates that trapezoidal effect of subtractive etch. And this is also a very tightly controlled process in general. So your line width and space is going to have much tighter tolerance than was available from the subtractive etch. So definite signal integrity advantages to this process, as well as circuit density improvement. In this image here, you're seeing the 75 micron line in space that was typical with subtractive etch. You're also seeing a 25 micron line in space, which is achievable with much of the standard imaging equipment today. And in fact, one of our licensees, after just a few weeks of this process being installed, was able to go down to 12 and a half micron feature sizes. So there's so much potential for PCB designers now that we have the ability to form these ultra high density feature sizes. So how do we make the most of these advantages? Let's talk to a PCB designer.